Hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm good. Um, I was wondering how it feels playing such an empowering female character that so many people, especially like young girls and women, look up to. Like it's Peggy a, Carter. Well, it's a, it's a privilege. It's like a very positive byproduct of playing a character. You know, it just gives much more meaning to my job. I remember I met this woman and uh, she was in Dubai and she was telling me, you know, could, could you write that women can be heroes too? And it made me feel so moved because I think it's such a, an honor to play a character who has a strong moral compass and just empowers other women and men too to know their value. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, I wanted to know how much of yourself do you put into Peggy Carter? How much of that humor and that sass is you? I'm a goofball. <laughs> She's a lot cooler than I am. So um, I kind of, I like to play around with her though. You know, I do a lot of pranks on set in between takes just to keep me excited and upbeat. Um, but I guess there's a kind of, a similarity I have is kind of, a strong sense of what feels right in my life and what feels something to fight for. Um, I've always been kind of an advocate of human rights, and I think that's something that I bring to the role. Thank you. Thank you. What's the best prank you've played on set, and who did you play it on? Oh, um, oh my goodness. I've done it a lot to Chris Evans. <laughs> Just like jumping out at him and like seeing this like beautiful, huge alpha male jump out of his skin is hilarious. <laughs> hey, Ellie. Hey, hi. Um, I was just wondering, do you know when um, you're gonna start shooting for Agent uh, Carter season two? Yes, the first of September. Oh. <laughs> nice. Also, I was at your VIP. Um, panel and uh, I was wondering if I could get a picture with you. I did, my photo that I took with you turned out really bad of sure, me. Sure, we can do it. Let's, let's do it after this. We'll go, go to the, um, my booth. Okay. Yeah? okay. All right. Thank you so okay, much. You're welcome. Hi, Haley. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you were to have Chris Evans guest star on season two of Agent Carter for like a dream sequence for Peggy and uh, Steve dance, would you? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. I mean, you just have to pick the right song. I kind of want it to be Anaconda by Nicki Minaj, but. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Ariel. Hi. On Twitter, you've shown a lot of support for Cardinelli and. Uh, oh, wow, look at that. But Peggy also has her history with Steve. So do you think Peggy Carter would identify as bisexual? Um, I don't see why not. She's a modern day woman. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jennifer. This is loud. Um, <laughs> my question for you is when you first accepted the role as Peggy Carter, did you think it was going to become a television series? And if not, what was your reaction when that was announced? Yeah, I had no idea. When I did the first Captain America film, I went straight back to London to do a play because I do a lot of theater in the UK. And then when I found out I was, you know, playing 96 years old in The Winter Soldier, that was something new. And then they, they asked me to do the one shot. And then after that, I remember sitting, I was on my way to dinner with Luis de Esposito, who's the co-president of Marvel. And he just said, so, uh, you want to make a show? I was like, yeah, let me think about it. And uh, it was out of that that we really created something together. And uh, what's been amazing is that being able to collaborate with the writers and the producers, so it doesn't feel like it's just I turn up and get told where to stand and what to say. It was very much a conversation of what, what story do we think Peggy should tell and what aspects of her character can we show that we haven't seen before in the movies. So it's been this amazing ensemble, this wonderful feeling of, of collaboration. Neat. And then I have a second question. After a long day of work, what is your go-to snack food? Ooh, go-to snack food. Um, well, it's like a pint of beer at an English pub. That's what I... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, my question was about a short film you did called Love Hate. Oh, yeah, with Ben Whishaw. Yeah. yeah. 
I was wondering if you prefer characters like Hate that you per that you played, or someone like Peggy Carter. I think Peggy gets the best of both worlds because she's still kick-ass, so there's still a level of aggression within her that's quite exciting to play. Mm. But there's nothing quite like playing evil. I mean, it's just it's <laughs> so much fun because you've got no repercussions and you're not actually hurting anyone. So you just get to kind of get a free for all. You get to like free reign of being really naughty, which I quite like. So yeah, I, I would choose the, those roles. And I was also wondering how you interpreted the ending to that. Um, it's a really surreal, for the people who haven't seen it, I basically play the personification of hate. So I am hate personified. And um, the whole, I think the message at the end of it is that, that we have good and bad within us. And if we try to deny one aspect of ourselves, it can come and, come and haunt us. So it's very much about finding a healthy balance where we're able to acknowledge um, and accept all the qualities that we have, both good and bad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, Hello. Yeah. <laughs> One of the neat aspects of the show is, um, is that it's set in the 1940s. And I love the, um, the 40s design, the sets, the costumes, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering that um, when you're on those sets and you, you wear those 40s Joan Crawford style costumes and all, does that like help you click into that Peggy Carter character? Oh yeah, it gives you such a sense of posture and elegance and authority and gravitas. Like it makes you walk differently, hold yourself differently. You can't slouch when you're wearing a costume like that. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, the only embarrassing thing is kind of like having to go to the DMV or trying to get my new driver's license and being in the, the, the mic pack, the harness, the pencil okay. skirt, the Spanx, the slip, the high heels, the wig, the makeup, and it's on my driver's license as me as Peggy Carter. That's, <laughs> that's when life gets a bit surreal. Are those costumes really uncomfortable or...? They're not, they're just quite restrictive compared to kind of the loose fitting costumes that we wear in modern day life. Um, yeah. But they, they definitely enhance the elegance and the grace of the period. You look great in it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, hello. Hi. Um, I have a, well, I saw a poster that you had a red hat on in blue skirt. I look just like Paddington Bear, don't I? Well, my, <laughs> uh, one of my, one of my aunts ha has a dress like that. Oh, cool. And the, the second thing is with season two in that Captain America Civil War with Daniel Brohl being Baron Zemo, do you think we'll see uh, uh, Heinrich, Zemo's dad? I don't know anything about Civil War, <laughs> although I, I did go and gate crash the set in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago and took some very silly photos of Anthony Mackie just hanging out backstage and, and playing computer games with Chris. And, and also, I discovered that Chris in his refrigerator has something called muscle milk. Yeah. Okay. That's how he gets those muscles. That's how he gets his muscles, <laughs> muscle milk. Yeah, very strange. So, wait, so, is Heinrich a possibility? I have no idea. I don't uh, even know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> I'm really sorry. And to thanks. be honest, probably can't tell us anything that I wouldn't be able to. Know. I'd have to kill you all if I told you. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Hi. Hi. Um, wow, this is loud. <laughs> yeah, tell me That's about good. it. That's good. That's how I'm here. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, Chris Evans scared you really bad. Yeah. Like, have you gotten him back yet? If not, I haven't you... seen him. I'm going to go see him in a, in a couple of weeks, and I plan to get him back really badly. I was, good. I was doing awesome. a play in, um, in London, and you know those plastic balls that you put in a children's play pit, the multicolored ones. So I bought 4,000 of them on eBay and I filled up my fellow actor's dressing room with them. So they came up to his knees and he came in to do the play and open the door and he just had this ocean of balls slap him in the face. He was like, Hayley! You just knew it was me. So um, I, plan, I want to do something kind of elaborate like that. I, I want to like dress up his, his trailer and, uh, and really mess with him because I think he'll, he'll get really, he'd get really pissed with me and I think that's funny. Can't, can't wait to see it. Thank yeah. you. I'll, I'll promise I'll, I'll post it on Twitter. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, so this is actually my first convention ever, and you're the first person I'm ever asking ever any questions. So oh, wow. You, what is, an honor. This, Welcome. This is my honor, really. Oh, thank you. Do you mind if I ask you two questions? Of course. OK, uh, so first question. You're responsible for bringing one of the greatest characters in all of Marvel to life, and you're telling all these stories from Marvel. 
but what is a story that you've always wanted to tell? Something that maybe you've been drumming up that you want to perform or publish a book or music or anything like that? Oh, wow, that's an amazing question. I think there's so much that I want to do. I mean, what would be incredible is to maybe direct my own episode of Agent Carter in the... In, oh, in the, okay. in, yeah, it'd be amazing. Um, do it, do it. Yeah, or, or executive produce. Um, I kind of feel like I've been on set long enough to get a few tips about what's involved. Um, but that's a conversation that I'm having with the writers and the producers just to see if, if there's a, a right time to do that. But I, I think writing, directing at least an episode would be great. We'll be looking forward to that in the credits. Thank you. <laughs> and the second question um, is about possibly you, but definitely about Agent Carter. Why did she tip the vial of blood into the Hudson River? She did is it. She le is she over Captain America? Never. That's Never. what I'm wondering about. Don't worry. She's, no, it's, it's two things. The first and the practical reason is making sure it never gets into the wrong hands. So it's protecting his legacy. It means okay. that he can never be cloned, which also means that she can never meet a version of him. But the reason for that is because she also has to, as a healthy part of the grieving process, she has to let him go in order to be able to move on in, his li in her life. Okay. So it's, it's a, a very bittersweet ending where she says, goodbye, my darling. It's kind of, it's her own form of burial or cremation. Um, and I think it, it makes the relationship even more bittersweet. And I just want to say for that, <clears throat> for that last line when you said, goodbye, my darling, yeah. I don't cry during TV very much <laughs> oh. every time. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for it. You're welcome. I actually have the prop department gave me a huge, beautiful cabinet full of all the main props from the season, including the nitramine ball and her, her key from the house that she lived in. And, she all, and they also gave me a vial of Steve's blood. So I have it safe. <laughs> uh, hi. Hi. So um, my first question, I have two, yeah. would be, um, what's the funniest thing that has ever happened on set? Um, I think it was what happened to my wig at the end of the whole season, where I, I tweeted this. For some reason, we all opened up bottles of champagne and ordered pizza after the last shot was filmed. And everyone came back, all the writers, the producers, actors who had wrapped weeks before. And I took my wig off, and I suddenly just look around, and, and it's just passed around to every member of the studio. I mean, I have like pictures of heads of Marvel wearing my wig, my dad wearing my wig, James Darcy wearing my wig. Um, so I, I kind of liked how that got around. I think that was kind of quite a, a nice send off for Peggy. Okay, and then um, my next question is, uh, oh my God, I forgot it. Uh, <laughs> That's okay, what's my favorite color? Oh, That's what is what your is. favorite color? Blue. Or green. Same. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Twinsies. 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 Oh my, oh god. my gosh. Soulmates. Oh my gosh. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I remembered it. Okay. Um, do you ever hang out with the rest of the cast, like outside of filming? Well, yeah. I'm. I'm lucky to say that James Darcy and Dominic Cooper, I've both known for about ten years. Um, and they're old friends from back in in the UK, and uh, it's great because it means when we. we <laughs> I remember like the last scene that. Dominic and I had. We'd both, both been out the night before together and we were just kind of, we just giggling. We hardly got through the scene because we were having so much fun. And that just makes the whole atmosphere on set so much more relaxed because when you're playing a lead, you have a responsibility to make sure the atmosphere on set is one that's positive and that's relaxed. And that means that everyone can do their job as best they can and, and as much as they want to. And then it also means it gives the work a lot more meaning. So people aren't just coming in because they're paid. They're coming in because they believe in the work that they're doing and they're passionate about it. And so having Dominic and James as my two friends who I'm working with just adds so much more value to the job. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank and you. I can't believe you called me twinsy. <laughs> so. Hi. Hi, I, I have one special question, but it's not from me. It's actually from someone I think you know. Oh. So I'm just gonna wait and slowly, 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 oh I wanna hear it. Oh! Long-time no, listener, first-time caller. Uh, Hello. Hi. Hi. You are so pretty in person. Oh, thanks, <laughs> honey. <laughs> thanks, babe. Uh, I have two questions. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the growing Hydra threat? Um, 
by the, by the way, I'm just asking for a friend. So All right, of course. Feel free. Baby, there is no threat. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Sound pretty threatening to me. Uh, <laughs> Um, and the second question, uh, I, I've heard rumors uh, about a crossover episode, time traveling, something about Ward and Agent Carter, like, getting together. I mean, I mean, again, this is just a rumor, and when I say I've heard a lot about this, I've heard about this once um, from myself. Uh, so really, just, again, your thoughts on that. Uh, <sighs> I think, you know, Peggy can influence any man and turn him into the right path. So um, as long as that occurs, I think there's a chance. Wow. Maybe. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank I, you, sir. <laughs> all right. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. There had better be fan fiction for that up <laughs> immediately. <laughs> How are you doing, Haley? Hey, I'm good. Good, good. Uh, I think I and a few others would like to know, uh, do you fondue? And uh, if so, what's your favorite ingredient? <laughs> Ooh. Do I, who do I, well, are you asking me who do well, I fondue I mean, with? I, uh, I, I mean, mean I'm, I'm, an, I'm a grown lady with needs. Of course I fondue once in I, a while. Well, I mean, no, I'm talking, um. <laughs> it's just cheese and bread. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, but you know what's a secret ingredient to a good fondue is it's called Lee and Perrin's Worcester sauce. It's like this brown, spicy sauce that you get in England, and I don't fondue without it. Okay, I got to go. try it. Thank you. <laughs> nice shield. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, all right, so I was wondering, um, you've been on, obviously, a lot of sets and a lot of Marvel sets. Um, which one is your favorite? My favorite was when I didn't actually have to do any work. So I just hung oh. out on the set of Cap 3 in Atlanta and, uh, you know, saw, saw them all sweating in their suits. And I was going, ha, 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 <laughs> um, And just playing uh, computer games in Chris's trailer and finding out what he had in his refrigerator. That's kind of the most amount of fun because um, there's no pressure. So you don't have to worry about lines, about creating a character. You're, just in, you're with a group of people that you've cared dearly, dearly for for the last five years and they become like family. So it's a, a, good, a good excuse to kind of meet my professional family and connect with them again. I'm gonna keep the trend of two questions. Okay. And I saw on Twitter, um, you were talking about how, I think you were in an airport and they were playing Captain America. Yeah. And like you walked in and literally nobody I did was like, anything. I saw it playing in the airport lounge. And I was like, hello, it is I. <laughs> and they were like, don't care. <laughs> like, who are you? <laughs> so um, have you had another one of those kind of experiences where you've kind of like walked into a room like, hello, I'm Haley Atwell, and well, nobody's noticed? The DMV, when I was dressed as Peggy, I was like, hello. And they were like, next. Oh. I, was, I was like, oh, sorry, sorry, excuse me. I got very British about it. And, very, <laughs> and then I went to see, I was in LA on my own, and I went to see Avengers 2 by myself. And because uh, I hadn't seen it, and I was like, I should help the box office, you know? They, they could do with some help. So I went, bought my popcorn, bought my soda, and just sat there in the audience with my glasses on, hiding behind my popcorn, and kind of waiting to be, you know when you do that thing where you, where you, you pretend you don't want people to notice you, but you're trying really hard to be noticed? You're just kind of like, don't look at me, don't look at me, don't look at me, no, I'm not here, don't look at me. And uh, no one cared at all. So uh, I just, I kind of like that, it keeps me grounded for sure. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Haley. Hi. Um, I was wondering, out of the main MCU villains, which one would Peggy want to beat up first? Loki, because he annoys the hell out of me. Oh my god. He's so, he's so evil. And that hair, I just want to wash it. It looks like I do with a good wash. Also, uh, is it true you have a photo of Tom Hiddleston brushing his teeth as Loki? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, but he won't, he won't ever let me show it. It's, it's on, on, it's, it's kind of in, it's going to be like in the photos of my memoirs in like 20 years time when he won't care. But yeah, there was a, I was watching him kind of helping him get ready for a Comic Con a couple of years ago. And I went and sat, sat with him who was getting ready and getting his wig put on. And then he just was like chatting and then he gets out his electric toothbrush. I was like, you, you lose all your enigma. You're just sitting there brushing your teeth in front of me. He's like, yeah, so, uh, yeah, and then I'm playing Loki and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it was, it was very cute, it was adorable. I love Tom, He's, I've known him again for a very 
very long time back in the UK because of theatre. And he's fantastic as Loki, so talented. And he's a gentleman too, which I really admire, I really value. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, first I want to say you have the best Marvel TV show ever. Thank you. And I just want to know who's your favorite Avenger and would you ever be interested in being the new Tomb Raider? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Why not? I think it's a fantastic franchise and, um, you know, she's English and she kicks ass. Absolutely. Um, my favorite Avenger's got to be Cap. You know, he's, yeah. he's one of my, you know, he's one of my best friends. He's such an amazing guy and he, I've been with him since the beginning of all this incredible adventure. So I, I feel very loyal to him. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, if Captain America and Peggy were still together in the 40s. Yeah. And he wasn't in the present time now. What do you think they would do together? Fondue. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> Hi. Hi. All right, I have a couple of questions. Uh, you mentioned your, how it's going with you and Chris and Dominic and James. Mm -hmm. What was it like with the rest of the cast and the members, not just in Agent Carter, but also in the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies? Well, I think you know, Marvel have an, an amazing ability to cast very talented people who seem to be perfect for their role because they make it their own. as such a, like a mix of mixed talent. Um, and I think they all bring a strength and their, you know, their voice to it. I met like Don Cheadle the other day, and I'm a m huge fan of him. I think he's fantastic, and he's in the Same new here. Avengers. And, um, you know, Scarlett Johansson, who's amazing and beautiful. And, um, Agree. And Lizzie <laughs> Olsen, who's just a wonderful girl. She's like, she's my, my new B BFF. She's awesome. Um, and I just think that they, they attract a lot of just also good people who are great at what they do, but also create the right kind of atmosphere so that the, the work can get done really well and um, with a lot of heart to it. Nice. And my uh, second question is that you mentioned season two coming up and you're yeah. filming in September. Yeah. Now, is there any chance we will see Agent Carter make an appearance in the future movies for Marvel Cinematic Universe? Yeah, there might be a little film called Ant-Man that might feature people. Nice. <laughs> Now I'm going to self-combust because I've been implanted with some kind of evil device that uh, I can't reveal anymore, otherwise I'll be killed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. By the way, you're a great looking at person, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, my hi. name's uh, Anthony. It's nice to meet you. I think you, number one, are a fantastic actress, and I have two questions for you. One, what's next for you acting-wise? Like, what do you want to do next? And two, what is your thoughts, or what are your thoughts, on the introduction of Sharon Carter into the MCU? Well, I have a few words about Sharon. <laughs> I think she's Sweet. fantastic, but she needs to leave my cap alone. <laughs> cap, go and find someone else's family. That's Amen. just dirty, that's just wrong. Um, and if I was around, I'd ground her. Be like, you're not going anywhere near that man. Um, and the other question was, well, I, I'm going to go back to the London and do a play. I know I disappear every, every while and I go back. And I, but I just love the stage and I love to play all the classic roles. You know, the great thing about theatre in Britain is that there is diversity. You, women are allowed to age. They are allowed to be complex and difficult right. and contradictory. And they're not just the sex bomb or the ingenue or the, of course, or the you know, of they, they have a three-dimensional quality about them that makes me challenge who I am and brings incredible ideas to my mind and inspires me so much. So you have these amazing women like Judy Dench and Helen Mirren oh. that crafted their lives on theater. Dame Judy Dench, legend. Yes, doesn't get any better than that. So I'm gonna go back to the West End and p probably play um, Hedda Gabler which is one of my favorite ultimate roles in, in classical theater. So I'm gonna do that. So a lot, lot more stage. Well, I'm a fellow theater actor and thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi Haley, you Hi. look so pretty. Well, thank you. Okay, I have two questions. Yeah. One is about Captain America, the first Avenger. How was it working with Chris Evans and Sebastian Stan behind the scenes? 
Oh, they're, well, they're just delicious, aren't they? Oh, aren't they? They're so delicious. But the, and Chris is gonna hate me for saying this because he <laughs> hates it every time I bring it up, but he's a really good tap dancer. <gasps> really? I heard. Oh, so I've heard Sorry, from Chris. I'm really sorry. He's, he's incredibly gifted, very talented. He plays beautiful piano, plays the guitar, and he sings. I mean, what's not to love? And then Sebastian is just, he's a dream, you know, he's a, he's a sweet, sweet guy who's very kind, um, very committed to what he does, you know, complex and interested in, in his craft. Um, and I just feel like I lucked out with them hugely. Okay, my second question. How does Peggy Carter feel about Bucky and the Winter Soldier? I think, you know, it's such, a, it's such a sad story and I think it brings even more depth to, back, to Bucky and his past. I think it's really interesting and I, I think it gave something for Seb to play so much more. I think he nailed it. I think he, he did a great job on it. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. We have about five more minutes, guys, so we're going to try and get through the I'll, last I'll few questions. I'll answer shorter. Really we'll keep it quick. Quickly keep it quick. as possible, please. Sorry, guys. Okay. I'm taking up your time. Hi, Haley. Hi there. Hi. I was the Disney guy. Um, I from know, the VIP I remember. Lounge. The merchandise yes. Disney guy. We're going yes. to Disney World, aren't we? Yes, we Couple are. A couple of months? Yeah. Yes. Um, my question was, I forgot to record, so that's why I'm recording now. Okay. Um, Hi. What kind of lipstick was Peggy Carter wearing in the show? It's called, it's by Besame, and I think it's called Cinnamon Sweet. Okay. Yeah. You love, you have, what is it? Oh, Red Velvet. Oh, it's, which one? Oh, Red Velvet's a lipstick, and then Cinnamon Sweet is a nail polish. Thank you, Peggy, over Thank there. you, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Appreciate it. See you in Disney in a few months. Okay. <laughs> uh, hello. Hi. You're a marvelous person. Thank um, you. I was just wondering if you've ever considered any other medium besides film and theater. Um, well, I've done lots of audio books and radio plays and television back in the UK. Um, I'd like to write, I'd like to and produce and maybe, maybe direct one day. God, I'm ambitious, aren't I? Um, I? I'd like to do it all. I think storytelling for me was the most, had the most profound effect on me growing up and it had the ability to move, inspire, provoke, encourage, uplift, challenge, all of these extraordinary things that just made me want to be a better person and just made me want to learn more about the world. And that's why I value this industry so much and why I'm so grateful that someone like Marvel has given me the opportunity to tell great stories. So I just want to continue working in that, in that medium. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi. I feel like I'm ignoring you guys over there. Hi. I just want to say hi. You're amazing. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, um, hi. I just... I wanted to know what scene you had the most fun filming in Agent Carter. Oh, the diner fight scene. Um, I think it's episode five, and she, you know, she jumps over a table, she whacks someone in the face with a plate, she punches someone over a table who collapses, she throws a chair to Jarvis that stops a door from opening. But I, I think I've said this before, and I'm going to bring up Anaconda and Nicki Minaj again, only because when I was learning the fight sequence, I would do this fight where this, this kind of, I would duck, but I would duck like this. And my stunt coordinator was like, babe, you're not in a club, this is not a rave, and you're not dancing. But the minute she said that, I was like, oh my God, yes I am, and it's Anaconda, it's Nicki Minaj. And so I had the whole song playing in my head as I was punching, and it was, it was just so much fun. So I would say that. But then there's also a scene between myself and Dominic where she confronts him about betraying her. And they might as well have shot the rehearsal because we were so in it, and we felt, we, we loved the writing. And uh, I think they got, it in, they got it in the first take and they were able to use some of it because it was such a passionate scene for us. Um, and they're very cathartic moments. When you have emotional scenes, they're a great way to release tension and frustration and build up emotion. Thank you yeah. so much. You're welcome. Okay, this is gonna be our last question. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, my name's Marco. Hi, Marco. I'm, I'm shaking. I just love you so much, and Aww. you're you're amazing. Um, I'm just wondering. Um, I'm also an aspiring performer, a yeah. musician of sorts. 
What is it like, compared to other works you've done, to immerse yourself the magnitude of being in the world of superheroes and comic books? I think the, the main thing is the, the gratitude that I feel in terms of engaging with my fans who really have spoken out online as to what they like about Peggy, what they don't like, and what they want to see more of. And I feel like Marvel have listened, and they'll continue to listen. So I feel, I feel indebted to them and indebted to all of you for being here and supporting what I do because it means that I get to do what I love for a living. And it makes me want to just give you more pleasure and more joy and more delight on screen. I mean, that really truly is the most moving part of what I do is to be able to meet people, you know, meeting young girls and young boys coming up to me going, I know my value. I mean, how positive and how extraordinary and rare is that, that we have role models that come into our lives that teach us something that we've already known about ourselves, which is that we are important, we do matter, each one of us has a story and we all have value. Um, and that, to me, connects us and makes us feel like we're all part of a bigger family. So I, that's what I feel. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Haley is going to be here all weekend. Yep. She will be doing photo ops in the back corner there. You can also see her all weekend. I be believe it's C8 is your booth. It's Somewhere along the back there. wall. So come see her, and we'll do all that. And actually, real quick, let's grab a picture, a yeah. selfie from the crowd. Selfie. So yeah. you come down to the end. Okay. Everybody okay. crowd around. Okay. Like I'll take your mic. Have you got to take the camera? We've got a photographer right there. You just go ahead and get on down. Get excited. All right, thank you so much, guys. Big round of applause for Haley. Thank you so much for coming out.